We've gotten a little bit It'll farther into the game. Line. What do you think? Um, Quick I'm just hit and pause run. this here. Get close to the truck and I'll take oh. care of the rest. Uh, Rab, okay, you I can't pause it right now. Yep. Just checking all to see. Specs, the plating's all in. It'll take uh, a punch and dish sure it right back. See Great. On my Mac, computer. you and Rav got that drone ready to fly? I'll be your eyes in the sky. All One right. Second here. Time to show the house we're back. Yeah, it looks good. Let's go grab ourselves a hypercar. Drone's online and I'm looking for the convoy. You guys better hurry to All the right. rendezvous point. Okay, cool. <clears throat> and I'll just make sure I can read the... Uh... I'm not sure what Rap did to the Mustang, but it feels tight and heavy. Like it's tensed up for a punch. All right, Ty, remember. The house will have enforcers protecting the convoy. We'll have to get rid of them first. Get me on the truck All right. which is the Ember Valley Tunnel, and we're in business. How's it going, Adrian Leon? How you doing? Nice little badge there. That's very cool, Taz. Aloha, how are you? Burton Pierre. Any loot boxes? Uh, they, uh, there are uh, speed cars, or speed cards that you collect in this thing. All right, so. That won't be necessary. Matt, how long have you known Jess? She I have to get to plan. the um, oh, exclamation mark and over there. Oh, oh, you got that right. So I have to admit I've been uh, have back, I've been enjoying oh, the gameplay. Oh, There's something about Need for Speed that always kind of hooks me. I'm, I, I'm not a huge yeah, fan of the uh, of the chatter. Seriously, the acting is. No. I'm here to help you get into the rush. That's it. Kind of so-so. Sounds more like radio um, DJs reading lines than actors giving us nuanced characters. And it's kind of a shame because obviously a lot of effort was put into trying to, you know, build somewhat of a story in here. So I think right now I'm going to go try and steal a supercar. So let's go see. I'm a little, um, I'm going to be saying all of this in my review, but I'm a little unimpressed with the, uh, the visuals for this game. It's not that it's, it doesn't look bad at all, but, oops, I missed my turn off. But, uh, it doesn't look as good as I kind of wanted it and hoped it to be. Um hoped for it to be. I think the uh, 2015 Need for Speed game was, even though it was all at night, it was so close to photoreal, it was really staggering. And I don't have the, this is playing on the PS4 Pro, so I don't have the Xbox One X version of the game, which I think looks better than this. There's no HDR. Um, it's 30 frames a second. You still get a sense of speed. At least I think this is pretty. Uh, this is 30 frames per second on the PS4 Pro. Um, it just doesn't look as shiny as I would hope it would when you're in the gameplay. I'm Marco A. I'm more of a uh, an arcade racer guy. I like the Forza Horizon games more than the Forza Motorsport games. But I, and I always, I usually dig the Need for Speed games. They, you know, the um, even if they've got all of these weird sort of monetization hooks or or um, things that piss you off in them, the core fundamental play of the Need for Speed games is always very accessible and addictive, and the loops are fun. And I think that's the that's the case here again. Um, there is. Uh, a tremendous amount of um, uh, criterion pedigree, because Ghost Games obviously is made up a lot of X, uh, made up of a lot of X criterion folks, and so you can Which absolutely, like, you guys are going to see how much burnout is in this game right now. You can totally feel burnout in this, and it's fun, man. But it's it just makes you think, why is EA sitting on burnout? Why, uh oh, that was sloppy. Why don't they just bring us back? some burnout because as cool as this is I don't think it's on, as impressive visually as 
the 2015 Need for Speed, and the open world um, quality of, of the experience, like you bust down, um, I'm kind of spoiling my review, but you bust down um, billboards and things like that, and collectibles to chase, cars to crash. It was all kind of done better in Burnout Paradise. At least it was fresh and new, and you know, to see it again is, is super cool, but... I failed! All right, let's try it again. Too busy chatting. Taz, yes, Burnout Paradise. Classic, epic. And even Burnout Paradise, I remember when that came out. As amazing as that was, because we had so much travel time between events, the world got a little stifling, you know, like we saw it a lot. And I missed the, house won't let us the, the uh, we gotta take out you know, cars. the, the unlocking the, the levels and unlocking the tracks element of uh, Burnout 3 and 4. I, st I still think 3 and 4 are my favorite uh, Burnout games. Oh, damn it. Okay. I need to not talk for a minute while I take out these things and try to catch this truck. Come on, get rid of these guys. Got you. It's very slick. <laughs> nice hit, Ty. One down, one to go. Oh, jeez. That last car's not gonna let you out that truck. You need to get rid of him. Hi, there's coming up. We've got to get rid of those cars. Come on, reckless enforcer. Oh shit. I'm gonna fail again. Nope. All right, no talking. I'm getting this this time. Sometimes when I chatter, I don't get the objective. Get me close to that truck before All it hits right. the tunnel. I hope you're all cheering me on in the chat. The house won't let us anywhere Let's near the do truck. this! We've got to take out those cars. With pleasure. With pleasure. Actorbot 3000. I will read my lines. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chain reaction. Oh. Oh, there we go. One down, one to go. Get rid of this guy, Ty. That's pretty much manslaughter, isn't it? Probably premeditated murder. I hope that car is worth it. Okay. Jess, you ready? Get me in position. Gotcha. Look out! <laughs> Holy crap. I got brake checked hard. We'll get him. This was the uh this guy's out of his mind! There's something much bigger going on here. They wouldn't go this far for just a car. What's the play? This New was the, uh, the mission that they were play the letting city. us play at E3. Are you guys seeing, <laughs> seeing and feeling. Pretty cinematic. Back up. They go back up. I see them. Take them out, Oh, man. I'm totally missing split second right now, too. That's the thing, man. So many great racing games over the years. It's so hard to stand out. That's what blew me away about Forza. I don't know, man. Forza Horizon 3. You guys remember, that was my favorite game last year. It was just incredible. Just so hooky. Guys, more house cars heading your way. We'll handle it. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on, don't come outside. These guys are tougher. Freaking tanks is what they are. They're going down either way. Guys, I'm hearing a lot of cop chatter. We got someone's attention. Then let's get this done fast. You think? Oh, damn it. Oh, wow. Getting pummeled. Okay, here we go. 
Oh, come on. Get out of the way. Come on up, Enforcer. Woo! Oh! It's a little more tuned than it was at E3. Goodbye. Catch the truck before the city. Oh shit. No way you can make it on the back. What's the plan, Jess? Where is it? Yet. Get me closer. Man, this looks great in here. Jess, I've got a really bad idea. Hope it sounds okay. I'll line. read the chat in get a second here. Hope hope I'm uh, I'm sounding okay. It's not too echoey. I've got it up pretty loud. I can turn it down. Oh, oh, oh. Take the bus, people. <laughs> okay, that line made me laugh. Alright, I'll turn this down just a bit. Keep it steady. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh Bezzy PhD, Warco Taz, Jay Avilia Avia. I like this game. Don't know why Dark Sider uh, Dark Cytophil hates it. Uh work away, thank you so much. Eric Purcell, thank you, man. Oh, yes. Sweet. I missed the uh, cutscene there, but I have this magic car now. All right. Uh, hopefully that sounds a bit better. Let me know if there are any uh, qualitative issues. In this car, never keep up. I've been driving around in some kind of souped-up Golf, but looks like in Golf GTI. This feels different. <laughs> Oh! Like that. <laughs> oh crap! Never stops. Okay, here we go. Take the car to the airfield. All right. Man, I can't wait to drive it. Sorry, Max. The Koenig X going straight to the gambler as soon as Raps had a peek on the Damn it! What I don't even know how to pronounce this car. Car costs as much as a house in Vancouver or, or more. You were right, by the way. Yeah. This is fun. Ha See that? One out of six. Have you apprehended the subject? I'm getting the uh, cop chatter out of the speaker. You see, when the uh, when the actors are reciting their lines, it doesn't really correlate to what has just happened, what has just transpired. Like I was crashing all over the place, and there was no. Uh, no discussion about that, and you, you, you sort of frame that in comparison in comparison to um, well, uh, Grand Theft Auto, and you know it's so elegant, so so the, the actors are perfectly tuned to sort of respond to what's going on. Bring it into the garage. Okay, so we just stole a supercar. Figure out what's so special about this thing before we ship it back to here. Very cool. Great success. I like it. I got my car. All right. Um. So, you lost the car. This kind of failure. Adrian, that's music to my ears, back. man. I got to jump back into Forza Horizon 3 again. You can be sure of that. Uh, my investors are becoming anxious. Houses in Vancouver still cost more. I thought you could I think this girl is um, I hope so. on uh, hood was worth more than your uh, The Expanse, which is a fantastic show. This Greg Capello, one thing I've noticed, because, you know, I've been, I did jump onto it um, a couple weeks ago, and then, I you know, I've been bouncing between, I'm trying to sort of play a little bit of everything before the end of the year, and we start doing our Rocket and Ray Gun stuff. Um... Uh, but, you know, obviously what's happening is that uh, EA and other publishers are launching these games and then they get feedback and in the case of EA, a lot of hatred and uh, they respond 
um, and tune and tweak and adjust and uh, you know carve back some of the prices and things like that. And uh, so they just get better, and it feels like it's getting increasingly more difficult to review these games. That's not just because you know media outlets like ours truly and uh, several others out there keep getting uh, hammered by the uh, the economies of uh, modern day media development, but also because games aren't done. They're, they're shipped, as you all know, um, sort of in uh, just a little bit of, just beyond beta form, basically, is, is version one these days. And uh, so much adjustment happens afterwards in, in direct response to uh, what what people are saying about these things. It's not just Battlefront 2, it's almost every game these days. So it's really tricky to kind of like give a definitive sort of pronoun pronouncement or a, a, a tally on a game. Kind of almost says he got the car. is a, a more fair Good. thing to kind of check, check in on these things like two Could've weeks after they've launched no. or a month you after they've launched. It feels like almost every game is very different within that, that first month period. I don't know if that's the way it's always going to be, but it's definitely the way it is right now. Oh, must be that speed trap. So you earn these stars and uh, they, they level you up. There's lots of different little, and there like lots of economies basically happening in here. You're, you're leveling up as a racer. Um, you're getting these speed cards, which allow you to level up your your vehicle uh, at tune-up shops. Let's see if I can go into a tune-up shop right there and get a sense of what's happening here. So I can buy cards, of course, um, and um, so this is what I have. I have pretty decent cards on this one. Let's see if I. Oops, if I go into, uh, I have a, f uh, on the head part, uh, I've got a five, so why don't I go for a six, I'll buy that, it's 14 grand, uh, sure, why not, and then it'll auto-equip it, so I've got a six the on the head there now. So all sounds weirdly, uh, uh, okay, so I've got a six on the head, just a weird sentence, uh, and now I'm going to get rid of this thing, uh, my, my extra five, and my, I can't get rid of the stock card for whatever reason, so these are, these are cards, basically, that I'm buying that, that become, um, uh, buffs for my vehicle, so I'm going to sell this, and I'm going to get 2700 bucks back, and we'll go back here, and I've got two cards I can sell over here, so let's sell that, and we'll sell that, and then, uh, that's just, I've got stock cards there, okay, cool, um, okay, and I can keep buying cards, but I'm saving up some dough to buy more vehicles. I'm in a little mini city here. Oh, and there's a billboard. Let's see if we can knock down this billboard. This is one of the... Uh, are you guys uh, the big sort of hunt for collectible type players? Like when you see, uh, you know, little doodads, coins, and rings and such. You go mental trying to collect every one of those things. I'm kind of like that. I'm a little OCD like that, so. so you go through the billboards, and there's 30 of them to collect in the track. Got six so far. Um, today was really my first big, uh, you know, spend hours on the game kind of thing, but I've got a pretty good feel for this experience now. Pretty fun. It, it, it you know what? It, the wind has been taken out of its sails a bit by how good Burnout Paradise was, you know? You guys know what I'm saying. Alright. I'm gonna pause for a minute and read a couple of comments here. Thanks to everybody watching this live, and thank you all who uh, watch the archive of this later. They're curious about this game. Uh, uh, hi, I'm from your Twitter. I'm new to watching YouTube live streams. 
Perry, good to see you. Yeah, I know, it's weird watching these streams. It's weird doing them. Uh, but I started last year. I just said, you know what, screw it. Uh, you know, I've been doing the EP reviews on the run thing the same way for so long. I got to shake things up. It's a different world. And uh, let's, let's, uh, let's do some streams and see how it goes. Um, and it's fun. I really dig this experience. It's, it's like, uh, it's not quite as lonely, you know? Like, there is this element of loneliness when you're playing, especially single-player games. Or multiplayer games where everybody just is way better than you and they just hate you on your team and they, they, they don't hesitate to tell you how much you suck. I don't know if that happens to you or if I'm just revealing too much. Maybe I'm using you guys as psychoanalysts uh, right now. Uh, but uh, uh, there is that moment of like, um, I'm all alone playing this game by myself for many hours. And then when you stream, it's uh, you, you kind of sharing the experience, you know? You got some, some people, some friends there with you, which is really cool. Where the hell is the Cat Quest review? <laughs> Reviewed, Happy Console Gamer. I jumped on that. I ended up playing that game uh, for hours with Ruby, and, and uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to review this damn game. It's very fun. And I did. Uh, Lung Kisser, that's, a, that's a, all kinds of imagery with that. Uh, it really makes physical media look more and more irrelevant. Not that I don't love it, but when the internet on those systems dies, you might be stuck with a real broken game. Yeah. Uh, bra uh, uh, Borat, Vic, you ever interview Sasha Bor Baron Cohen? Uh, Warco, I've never interviewed him. I don't know if he's been on EP. He may have been on EP, because we probably went to junkets and some of the movies and stuff that he was in. Uh, he might have been, I'm not sure. Did you guys catch the Tommy Wiseau interview that Sean did from a, a few years back? It's so epic. It's, so, it's unbelievable. It must be so surreal to be Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau right now and to have all of this attention on their ridiculous movie in so many different ways. It's hilarious. Uh, Greg Capello says, Ahoy! Apparently watching this stream from his submarine, which is amazing. Um... J uh, via I like this game. Don't know why. Okay, I said that already. I I somewhat enjoyed it. I absolutely hate EA's choice in music. Yeah, it's you know, Taz. I I turned the music off on this thing, and uh, I oh you know what I did is I uploaded some video sequences from this because we're going to use. Yeah, I was rec I was um, saving stuff from the machine. Uh, and uploading directly to YouTube uh, as unlisted video files so that we can take them down and, and um, use them in our edit. It's a pretty convenient way that you can do stuff using YouTube and the PlayStation 4. Uh, but immediately everything gets flagged right away. You know, So EA has spent millions of dollars or whatever. They've worked out relationships with, with music publishers to get all of this fancy dancy, you know, awesome music into this game. But if any YouTubers post any of that content with any race with this music, it instantly gets flagged. And actually, one of the videos with this music uh, from this game got uh, blocked, fully blocked worldwide. Nobody can watch it ever. I can't. I can't even look at it, and uh, or I think I can. And it's just like, why is it the video game industry think if they're going to use? Sorry for touching the mic. If the video game industry is going to use streaming as a way to market and you know spread the, the word of mouth around their content why don't they want streamers to like stream the full experience with all their music and if they're building up an audience and, and uh, you know putting the work in to try to create some sort of entertainment on their channels why can't they monetize against it you know why why are they doing that why don't they license the stuff with the ability so that that music can be streamed and enjoyed. And I guess this isn't just EA, this is every music publisher, or every uh, game publisher right now, who should be thinking that, uh, you know, the music pubs should also be thinking about that exposure as well. You know, it's almost like, uh, I mean, these are microcosmic little tiny media channels, every YouTuber and, and, and Twitch streamer out there. But they're kind of the new wave of, of radio, or could be in a way as well, you know? Like, it's about spreading the word. And so much of the way that we, we find out about stuff now is through uh, our, you know, our internet tendrils like this. It just seems short-sighted to penalize 
wanted to chat. The sure. streamer so, or I wanted to ask you. Um, you know, likely what's happening is that music is not being heard with this, these experiences, and consequently, I think there's probably, uh, you know, subsequent streams that are being uh, missed, and, and uh, possible album sales. And the streams aren't as fun without the music, right? But, I know I turn the music off on a lot of these things, it's like, who wants that hassle? There, I just got off my soapbox. Let's race a bit. Okay. Um, uh, say, where are we going? We're going to that big orange exclamation mark in the middle of the city. There you go. I am meeting the gambler over there. So this is kind of like a, uh, a Las Vegas, complete with desert areas, and there's some mountainy, uh, uh, you know, redwood tree type areas, and there's some urban, you know, uh, gambolicious type areas. Okay. Oh, wrong way. We go this way. Right there. It's pretty cool. I mean. The one thing that this does have over the 2015 uh, Need for Speed is a lot more variety. So maybe not as um, sleek in its snapshot view of uh, approximation of photorealism. Um, but still expansive, quite lovely. You do want to get out of the car though. I mean, that's the one thing that I've noticed, is that it's, uh, you want to have that experience like you're in a Grand Theft Auto type game. And you don't get there. And I, I you know, honestly, I feel like Need for Speed, it's, it's almost time for EA to just bite the bullet and let us play as the characters in the game. I mean, they made a goddamn movie of Need for Speed. They may as well just make an open world, you know, Fast and the Furious type game where you play as these characters, you know, which is uh, it, it's sort of a T-rated Grand Theft Auto. But who knows, I ain't running EA's business. But that's what I would do if I was making Need for Speed. And then I would, uh, I would also spin off a Burnout team and make Burnout as well and make that a, a strictly a ridiculous... Uh, arcadey obnoxious racer and just let it keep permutating and getting better and better I don't know where the hell is supposed to go see if I could get out of the car I would just jump out of it jump off of this overpass oh I see I gotta I gotta get up there okay oh I can start here okay I can start from underneath this thing okay all right sorry uh, uh it really makes physical media. Oh, I read that one already. Hey, Are you going to stream? Uh, Tyler, absolutely. Smiley99, boy, I can't wait to play that game. Uh, he's talking about Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I have yet to have played it. I, I, I tend to stay away from, even though it's super popular and I should have, I get inundated with lots of things that I got to deal with. And my policy has been pretty much I don't really spend a lot of time with the beta codes that I get and the early access stuff that I get. I prefer these things to just be finished before I jump in, finished with quotation marks. Um, mostly because I feel like it's like the responsibility I have with EP um, is really kind of all right, guys, time wrapped to around stuff that has ship shipped that is final code you know and I, I'm doing my best to try to keep up with everything it so it's pretty hard for me to kind of play the super early stuff um, and so I haven't especially now you know I, like when I had um, other teams and had a little more time to be choosier with stuff I would probably dive into that stuff a little bit more um, but since I'm doing the bulk of the uh, the reviewing on my own these days, I, I kind of just sort of tend to gravitate towards the, the stuff that's that's uh, deemed as final and shipped. Okay, Riot Club. Uh, yeah, we can do this. All right. So I have not played Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and I can't wait. 
Uh, I'm going to get my ass kicked so badly in that game. Uh, do you hope they make a second Need for Speed movie? Uh, <laughs> you know, that movie wasn't horrendous. I actually thought it was okay. Um, so I, I wouldn't mind seeing another one of those. I think Rami Malek was in that movie, and he, I think uh, he was one of the best parts of that movie. Rap, please. You act like I've never raced before. Not like uh, I've why bother with SNES Classic? You can really uh, easily emulate that on a PC. So concerned, um, finally found a SNES Classic race. for retail Not at bad. GameStop. Last Fantastic Vic rules. Right I love that little thing. Um, let's see. Uh, do I like this more than the Forza series portal? Portal player? Um, not anymore. Um, no, Forza Horizon has stolen my heart in the arcade racing arena. Uh, especially that third one. Absolutely blew me away. And um, in the sim space, Forza Motorsport, I find is much more enjoyable than uh, Gran Turismo. I haven't played Gran Turismo Sport yet. I've played quite a bit of Forza Motorsport 7. I'm kind of in racing mode right now. Um, so I'll, I'll probably be either collecting my thoughts in one video about all of these games, Need for Speed. Um, there's Gear Club on this on the Nintendo Switch I've been playing as well. And um, Forza and uh, Gran Turismo. And I've also got a rally game called WRC. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to you know, burn some rubber on all of these things. No pun intended. Actually, pun very much intended. Uh, one of the things that I've found... Um, disconcerting about this is that it becomes tiresome driving to your event which invariably is quite far away from where you last completed an event and I think that's problematic because that's what this game is you're just driving from location to location and it's not as fun as it should be and part of that problem, I think, is that you have... I'll show you a perfect example. This is kind of like reviewing while I play. But reviewing... Like, this is literally reviewing on the run. There are very few people in the city. Very few. It feels very naked for such a, uh, you know, big city. But then... The game just populates, like, four characters clustered together kind of not doing anything, just sort of sitting right there. And their feet are in the ground. And it's, it, you know, you're not really selling the, the world being alive when you make decisions like that. And I know it's all about, you know, the resources and the uh, Matapolis and all the other stuff that they have and not wanting to tax the engine and all that. But it's, it's not as cool as it should be. This is EA's mega racing brand. This is the brand that killed Burnout. And uh, there's just high expectations, you know? Okay. Plus, there have been just some phenomenal Need for Speeds in the past, you know? Like Hot Pursuits, I did think of those games. I mean, that's that's part of the problem. It's it's almost like the the superhero genre, you know, like when you have so much choice and there's so many good ones. If you come out and you're just okay or or pretty good, like the Justice League movie, which I think is in between okay and pretty good, um, it just it doesn't really matter, you know. It doesn't really make a make a lot of noise. And I think that's being reflected in the box office. And I think similarly, this this is a very a sleek, slick-looking racing game. Who are you? But you there's an ocean of really slick, excellent-looking, really well-playing uh, racing games. You can call me big you know? sister. And what does the house want with you? And You're so it just has a really tough time standing Morgan. out. Prove you've got what it takes to race with the Riot Club. Then we'll talk.
I don't know how many more years Need for Speed gets away with telling a story, <laughs> telling a story with characters, and all we're looking at are tail lights. Yeah, yeah, I know what to do. I think. Uh, rev up at the start line to get the needle in the green. You will launch automatically on go. Okay. So this is going back to the uh, underground base. Oh. Come on. Come on. Ah, you got me. One more time. <laughs> ah. Next round, okay. Um, uh, will Last Jedi be the last review for the year for Film Fury? Um, I think so. Uh, just got the invite to greatest show on earth or something like that or the greatest showman or something the, the Hugh Jackman movie I don't know when that review is embargoed I'll probably I'll probably review that one and then we're, we're going to do a um, uh, Film Fury's best movies of the year discussion as well and we've got some fun stuff um, planned for the rocket and ray guns, and uh, any any and every sponsor of EP, stay tuned. There's going to be uh, some messages headed out your way because we want you guys involved in the rocket and ray gun awards this year. Just at a production meeting about Good that today. Going, Tyler. All right, uh, that sucked. Let's see if I can do this again. Mission failed. Um. We have no rules, but yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn and Adrian is a breathtaking yeah, yeah, piece of entertainment, isn't it? I've I've been uh, diving back into that one recently too, and. That's a really hard game to take your eyes off. And so gorgeous. And so good, too. Just filled with awesome characters and great content and an interesting story. Great mechanics. They really killed it. Oh, man. Why, why is he crushing me? F you, Sonny. Come on! He's like way ahead of me. Am I waiting too long? That's a good sound. Um, oh, nitrous. Thank you. I didn't think I had nitrous. Hey, Caver, I'm playing on the PS4 Pro. Isn't an option. Okay. I heard it's much better on the uh, Xbox One X. Go. Let's go, 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 let's go. And keep ahead. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh. That wasn't really fair. I, I hit him, but I won. Um. They need to make a game called Need for Speed Revenge. Well, this is called Payback. It's pretty close to that, Tom Stovall. Um, Portal player, except for the Forza's, none of the racing games are making much impact. I mean, that's... Uh, Last the round, challenge is, the, is the, the... You know, there's just so many. There's a glut. We are gluttons. We have so many good racing games to choose from. Gotta hold 
on to it. And usually, because they're all about streaming content in, and it's it's like um, it's how you test the capabilities of a console. So you always have pretty sweet looking. Oh, you son of a bitch! I gotta do that again. You always have. Um, Pretty sweet looking racers with every console generation. They age pretty well too, you know. Like the, you can go back and play uh, PS3 and Xbox 360 racing games, and they still handle and look pretty sweet. And you can even go back to the old 16-bit stuff like uh, Super Mario Kart and be impressed. And F Zero. Um, this game felt too arcadey. That's why I stopped playing it. SNN. Yeah, man. They they have a tough spot there, the Need for Speed team. They have a uh, tremendous amount of expectation, and um, which is rightly so. Um, and it has to f fit into that perfect slot where it's super accessible no and goals. mass market, because the sales, you. you guys yeah, remember yeah, how crazy, I think. I think they sold nine million or more uh, Need for Speed Underground. Like, game changing stuff, no pun intended. Um, so every time they step up to the plate with one of these things, it's a big deal. And it, I, it's uh, a tremendous amount of stress for, for uh, the team. Let's go! Get it! Go! He's fucking got me again, son of a bitch. Oh, I don't like that Sunny. That Sunny can suck it. Um, Corey Nolan's going great. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, Greg Capello, the Underground series got me hooked way Last back chance. when. Yeah, that was game. incredible stuff, man. They really tapped into that whole early Fast and Furious kind of vibe. All the news reports about street racing and uh, how dangerous it was, and the box office was huge, and it, just became, it was a moment. And, and uh, EA was right there with this franchise. Let's go! Oh man, I totally blew it again. Oh, let's restart. Okay. wheelie for two seconds. How do I wheelie? Try upgrading your car. Yes, I will if, if I fail again. But I did get them once. We have no rules but drag rules. You break those, I break you. Yeah, yeah, I know what to do. I think. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. This is pretty cool. I like this. Oh, well, he's got me. I don't know why. My ship is too early. Let's see if I can do this one. Chance, pressure's on. Sportsman like of me. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. Yay, I win! Oh, I'm so good at that. <laughs> Sonny can just eat wall. Eat wall, Sonny. Last 
round. Just do your thing. Oh man. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Sunny. Right. Out of my way. Out of my way. Go. I totally cut you off and smacked you into the wall. That's the kind of racer I am. Need for speed. Aggressive loot boxes are yeah, killing this gen. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Uh, Hot Pursuit, even boast, uh, wanted were some of my favorite experiences in the PS3. Yeah, absolutely. They need to strike a balance like other publishers. Yes, they do. Uh, uh, is this, this game another copy and paste jammed full of loot boxes and a pay to win model? Uh, Nocturnal Toothbrush, they definitely have, um, these are the things that you, that you can buy, by the way, the, uh, the speed cards. If you open them up. I, I feel like, oh, look at that piece of crap card that I don't need. Oh, actually I do need, so I'll equip it. Um, I feel like everybody that's, you know, tasked with implementing these things, these loot boxes, or, um, you know, doing the animations or drawing them, it must be soul crushing to go into the, into the office every day and work on that, that stuff, you know, and to track all those analytics and to see what's psychologically more effective, it's all really, it's all crappy, it's, it's really, it's really sucking out the soul of the game industry. Uh, uh, that's really cool. Super two, TK, uh, super TK full. Super TK full. I, I don't know how to read that, but that's awesome that you hear, my man. Uh, Juan Torres, how you doing? What's up? I think I'm supposed to read it that way. Uh, Camaro, we keep it. I got a Land Rover. Uh, I tried to make a little bat symbol and I put a Canadian flag on my my car. I'll show you. You can create your own custom skins. Um, let's select this car. This is not the most useful for drag racing. Uh, let's view my car. I like that sort of gunmetal slash midnight blue kind of thing. I don't think I've ever seen a Land Rover like that. I tried to make my own. It's lame. I didn't spend hours on it, okay, guys? Go easy on me. Tried to make a little bat symbol on the side there. Still pretty cool looking, right? They did a nice job with the models. Okay, I don't want this car. No, I don't want this. No. Um, I want to go... I actually like this car because I've... Sp no, not this car. I've spent... That's, that's the car I'm fixing up. You find all kinds of junky pieces and, and uh, you build, what do they call them? Um, oh, I forget. They've been uh, left behind. This isn't the car I was, I was on. Uh, I don't want this. I want this. All right, let's go. Okay. Exit garage. Um, do you think the day, do you think DayZ is coming to the Xbox will be big for Xbox and will you play it? I will give it a shot, absolutely. Um, I think this free-to-play stuff is actually working quite well on the consoles. I know that the Warframe people are super happy. Uh, uh, super TK full, uh, TQ, uh, TQ full, Super TQ full. Um, Video Games Live is definitely crushing it. They've got a whole Canadian tour planned. Oh, there's something weird happening here. Some kind of bug action. Um, and he has been killing it. He's been uh, taking the, the show, changing the show every year, but also taking the show to new cities all the time. He's been traveling the world. He's been, he's been everywhere. He really turned that dream of his into... Uh, just an, ama you know, an amazing adventure, and um, 
I, you know, he just he really became that rock star that he that he always dreamed of one day becoming. You know, through video game music, which is just incredible. Nighttime. This is when the streets come to life. Oh my God! Like people had to read that crap. Ugh. Like somebody in their car driving around would say that to himself. I don't want to do another drive. Let's, let's go see what this agent thing is all about. Nighttime. This is when the streets come alive. Side of the speed trap. There's a billboard around here. Stop everything. There's a billboard around here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's how I play open world racing games. Where you have the collectibles to find. Gotta go get that billboard! Whatever we do, how do I get over there? I can't get that way as well. Smack the car on the bitch. Something to smash, I will smash it. There we go. Oh shit. Really hard to turn when you're in uh when you press the uh, nitrous on the camera here. Oh sorry guys. Pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. Got a billboard! Billboard! Got it. Alright. Uh, Smiley99 Boy says, Have you ever be, uh, been filming a review outside in public and had someone just stand there and look at the camera? Did you ever just let them stay in the background? Uh, definitely have had people watch um, as we've been filming reviews. And usually people are uh, phenomenal. They're very polite. Um, sometimes they, they want to say hello afterwards, and that's totally cool. Um, there have been a couple of times... Uh, you know that it, it has been a little bit weird. Like one time, Johnny and I were shooting a review for, for uh, it, was, it was reviews on the run. We were reviewing a movie just that sort of preceded our film fury days, and um, uh, some guy just came and just stood at the camera and sort of taking pictures of our setup. And I guess he was thinking of using the same equipment we were or something. But he was just so obnoxious and rude. And I finally had to say, God, we're trying to work here. You're really interrupting us. And he said, well, this is, this is the street. You shouldn't be on the street. And that's like, come on, man. Just leave us alone and let us finish our job. And, uh, and then he just, he did leave. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was weird. Usually people are way cooler than that. Sometimes it can be a little, uh, a little distracting. Depends if... You know, it depends Let's where go. they stand and how they stand, if they're moving around a lot or, uh, you know, because nice you, when we shoot way. those reviews, whether it's me alone or me with another person, it's, there's not a script there, right? We, we have some thoughts in our head that we're trying to kind of formulate into coherent sentences. Oh, now we got cops. Um, so if there are... If there are tons of distractions around us, it becomes increasingly more difficult to find uh, the correct words and the sentences that you want. And, but you know that's part of the job, and it's part of the it's part of the excitement of shooting in public. And honestly, 
I found over the years that shooting stuff in Canada is a lot more chill and there's a lot less um, sort of instinctual um, sort of commotion that happens in the States. And I feel like in the States, no, I'm not meaning this to be a, any kind of offense to any Americans that are watching right now, but in the States I've found that there is this predilection to, uh, you know, to see what's happening and why are you shooting and where are you shooting this and can I be on this show and can I be in front of the camera and it's like Americans tend to be a lot less shy about sort of stepping into frame and saying something or, or uh, giving us a hug or whatever, you know. We've had all kinds of weird experiences that way. Um, but Canadians generally stand back and are, as you would expect, pretty polite and just curious. But uh, it's always funny, though. We, we do get people, you know, I, I've had people like in their, you know, 50s, 60s, walking by in a, a small group or whatever. And uh, oh, somebody Max just wants to be goofy this. and witty, and they say, uh, "Can I be on the show? What can I say? Can I be on? I, I, are you guys here to interview me?" And it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's cute. It's more cute than anything, but uh, it is funny. It's interesting to see the um, the, the psychological effect that that uh, a camera out in the field, out in public, kind of has on people. It's very interesting. Blade Blur, thank you so much. You're sorry I went through that. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. You help every day by watching our stuff, Blabler. Thank you very much. Let's go. Who the hell are you? I'm your ride. Name's Miller. Ramirez. Nice to meet you, Ramirez. <laughs> Smiling at night, boy. Yeah. We've had some good stuff with security guards and things like that. I mean, we we've um, we have been kicked out of lots of places. Um, the funniest ones, though, are when we were at a game company and they take up like 90% of the, of the building because they're big. And they, you know, they either lease the building or they own a big portion or whatever, but there's independent security and we'll do something like, look, we want to shoot on the roof or we want to shoot on the... With the roof, you need lots of special sort of approvals and stuff like that. But let's say we want to shoot something in the parking lot. We, we have got shot in parking lots and then had security come out and say, no, 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 you can't shoot here. And it's like, well, we're shooting here because there's a sign of your company and the, we've got the company person here. We're not just like walking off the street and shooting here. We're shooting because we're collecting an interview about the, the company that's paying this enormous enormous rent in your building right now. And it's, uh, it's just been, been funny to kind of see that. You know, they're just doing their job. I'm not meaning to, to trash any of the folks that have to do that. But it, uh, it is pretty funny. And we have... We had filmed security guards just doing their job, kicking us out, and then we blurred faces and changed voices and stuff like that, and added it into the content. Um, sometimes it's, it's a little seat of, seat of your pants uh, TV production, but that's kind of all the stuff that keeps the stuff feeling fresh and, and alive, you know? You guys know. Anybody that's been watching my material for a long time knows that uh, hey, I think a big part of the reason why we had so much longevity with our stuff is we didn't just stay in a studio and we didn't just do the same show every single day, you know, it was, uh, it, it was a lot of travel and a lot of trying things, a lot of trial and error, and uh, having as much fun just making it as, as we hope the show is, you know. I think the two go hand in hand. Be advised, the subject is trying to take out patrol That's why units. I still travel like crazy and go on, uh, advised, on these trips and interview people at their studios limited. and stuff. Because it's, it's Copy. Uh, and shoot outside. It's funny to uh, read comments from people that have never seen reviews on the run, and, and uh, they're just like, "Why are you guys outside? Why do you guys think you're here. CNN weather weatherman or something? Like, what are you doing that for?" And it's like, well, you know, I learned long ago that this was a sedentary industry about a sedentary topic because we're all sick on our butts to enjoy this stuff. And, and the, the antithesis to that is to is to get off your off your butt and get on your feet and, and shoot some of this conversation outside. And it's uh, it injects a whole different energy. Moving the pen subject to the side. Now heading north. 
it really does. Okay, so I'm trying to go through these, uh, these time extension hoops. I've been missing Star Fox a lot. I don't know if it was the Super Nintendo uh, Star Fox 1 and 2 on the SNES Classic. But I, I'm jonesing for a, a fantastic new Star Fox game. And I don't know if they're going to do it because uh, the last one didn't do well for the Wii U. But every time I drive through one of these rings, I'm just I'm reminded how, how much I've, I've loved Star Fox. Okay, I got away. Woo! I was awesome. I was chatting the whole way and I, I got away. That's amazing. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, what game do you think wins Game of the Year on Thursday? I think it's going to be Zelda Smiley Boy. What do you guys think? I get a lot of... I'm, I'm, uh, I put a Twitter poll up for best visuals and it was amazing that it was, it was Horizon that came out on top and, and Zelda came in second place, which was very surprising. Uh, but people really love the look of that. But I think Zelda was such a staggering piece of work and a surprise and a reinvention that Nintendo really didn't need to do, but they did. And they, they, it's just so amazing that they did it and they've had this year. Like Nintendo has just crushed it this year. They've just been phenomenal. And I, I think it was Zelda was like this, you know, turning point for them this year. And for the business too. I think it was really an important piece of software. Uh, Smiley99 says, I think PUBG because of the huge numbers of players. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a game that's making an incredible amount of people happy. Uh, Mr. Brockerock, I think it's Mario, though I think Nintendo oh, might split God. the vote for Game of the Year. Can yeah. The um, Andy McNamara was, uh, was you know, when I was hanging out with him at E3, was pretty convinced that uh, Rockstar was going to move Red Dead Redemption 2 because they didn't want to be in the fray with uh, The Legend of Zelda. And I, I think he was right. I think that they're probably finished on that game. They're just tuning it. They probably could have made a winter release, but decided that uh, uh, let's, get a, uh, let's get out in uh, 2018 and, and try to be recognized as the best game of next year. And I think it will be. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn is Corey's pick. Corey Nolan's pick. Uh, uh, Super TK, TQ Full with a great question who came up with the idea to shoot our reviews on the run. Um, okay. Um, I'll try to keep this story not too long. Don't I, I tend that. to ramble on these on questions like this, but uh, it is a pretty cool little piece of history. Anyway? We were uh, shooting EP interviews the in you San really Francisco. To to Tommy boss. was with us, and um, so I was like either conducting anyway. interviews. Like we, we used to visit studios a lot in those days, and I would take some of the interviews, and Tommy would take some of those interviews, and I would direct a lot of stuff. And you know, it's kind of getting the tone. This is like season one of EP. And getting the tone of how we were, how crazy the yeah, show was going to be. Um, and on the route, we were in Burlingame, which is uh, south of San Francisco the City. That's totally uh, different. There was a drive-in theater there, and we were driving past it, and I saw it, and it came to me that that would be an amazing place to shoot our video game reviews, and we could fake project it using vi digital effects on the screen, and we could kind of make that the theme for the way that we so you know within five or ten minutes of seeing that location the whole sort of concept for what reviews on the run was going to be was framed it was there it was poof it was like yes this will be a great segment in the show we'll shoot outside in different places all the time it'll keep the show kind of vibrant and electric and uh, it's called the electric playground. Uh, but uh, reviews on the run came out of that moment as well, right there. And I said, it's it, it, you know, we'll, we'll call it reviews on the run, and, and we'll we'll just shoot it all over the place, and uh, and it worked. And so that first reviews on the run shoot, which was in our pilot that we used to sell the concept, we shot in that in that we bought tickets, went to the movie, and and. Uh, Instead of and watching the movie, stop. we uh, um, was... set up the car kind of at a different angle, and, and uh, we, we used the headlights of the car to light Tommy and I, and uh, we sat on another car, I think some other car that was parked there, I can't even remember, and uh, 
premiere as, as a long And play we uh, we shot at the drive-in theater that night. So you're my mysterious benefactor. Great question. I have a chance for you to prove yourself. Uh, Interested? I figured Marcus Weir had a good reason for putting us in touch. We'll see. Sending you the info. Uh, Blade Blur working on the top 20 games of the year and saying this is one of the hardest years ever. I would fully agree with that. We are spoiled. There is just so much fun entertainment out there. Yeah, this was an <laughs> incredible year. Lots and lots of great games and lots of good movies. And uh, it's just so much joy in this escapism. It's, it's unbelievable. And honestly, a little therapeutic, you know, when you see a lot of the stuff that's happening in our world right now. There's a lot of darkness out there, and, and um, I guess the trick is to not just com get totally lost in this escapism and, and, you know, completely forget about everything else that's happening. But, boy, it's, uh, it's a real treat to go into these worlds at these amazing creators have built for us when, when we have so much other strife out there. And uh, thoughts are with anybody in California dealing with these wildfires that are happening right now. Unbelievable. Alright, did not get that. Um, so... Let's do, I think we're going to do one more event, and I think we're going to wrap this up with the, uh, the stream. I think we got a good taste of this. Uh, let's go to this. We'll go to the map so you guys can see all the icons. And you can see all the stuff that you can do. And I think we're going to do this green shift lock, report to underground. Mysterious driver who combines. Oh man, okay, it's a it's a drift thing. Okay, so we're gonna go. You can fast travel, which we're gonna do. We're gonna bounce over there while I'm doing that. I'll read a couple of these other comments. Uh, Blade Burr usually does ten, but he's doing so many more this year. He's doing twenty because it's such a packed year. Um, I remember those effects, super TQ full. I remember those effects. They were super rad at the time. Thanks for answering. Uh, my pleasure. We were pretty ambitious with the way that we had a, a director at the time named Scott Barrett who has gone on to uh, become a director and, and editor on lots of commercial projects like um, advertisements for huge companies, huge corporations. Uh, super passionate, talented guy. A little crazy, but that's kind of what we needed back in the day. Uh, and uh, he was really zealous about how real those effects... We fooled a lot of people. I don't think we would now, but back then we fooled a lot of people. We had a lot of people thinking that we really projected on these walls and, and these different... Because uh, we, like, we were in a meat locker. We had all kinds of crazy locations. Um, and uh, he would have, if anybody knows anything about editing, he would have uh, you know huge layers of effects to try to create the the, uh, the composite, to create the kind of aesthetic of uh, of us really projecting on there. And he labored over it. And sometimes that labor ended up causing our outputs to be delayed because we would be waiting for all of these huge renders because, you know, back in the mid-90s, the computers were just not fast enough to handle all of those effects. Uh, hey Vic, thanks for the stream. Gonna go check out Fubar on Twitch. Yes, you guys can do that too. He's fantastic. Uh, he's he's the, he's probably the strongest gamer I know, and he's hilarious, and he plays lots of good things. Um, uh, what else we got in here? Oh, you guys are all chatting too with each other. I love seeing that. Um, my game of the year was Resident Evil 7 in VR, G Rockwell. Yeah, that was a blast, and I loved streaming that game. You guys got to see me crap my drawers. That game is terrifying. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. Warco A says, part of my job, I'm taking customers to Star Wars Last Jedi. Now I get to figure out how to way to incorporate playing video games into my job. Sounds like you got a great job, man. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Piano Hack asks, hey, Vic, do you own a Vive and do you still play time? Do I still play it? 
from time to time. I do own a Vive. Um, I haven't done a bunch of VR uh, gaming because it's been the end of the year and all the big kind of releases have been just slamming at us. Bam, bam, bam. And I've been trying to play them and review them as quickly as possible. And um, so, the you know, long story short, have not gone back to the Vive. Uh, when I did the Oculus um, uh, Touch review and I did a, a sort of a retrospective of the software on the Oculus, I, I think that turned out to be a pretty good video, actually. You guys should check that out if you're curious about the VR stuff. But when I did that, I also dug into the Steam library and looked around and see, to see if I was missing out on a lot of uh, Vive stuff that I haven't touched. And at that time, I, I, I didn't really see too many titles that, that um, really stuck out to me. But my intention is, um, I'm not playing any VR tonight because last night I played Doom v VFR and it made me wheezy, uh, or queasy. Um, so uh, today I said I'm taking a break from VR, but my intention is to play some more VR throughout this week. I want to do kind of a VR report card of uh, the sort of, the, the, you know, the state of the VR game content at the end of 2017. I feel like it's slowed down considerably. I think there's, you know, people have gotten a lot more realistic about um, um, the install base and the sales figures that they're going to get with their software. And I think, you know, there's been less momentum on trying to release millions of things in 2017. But we have seen some pretty incredible software like Skyrim and Doom is pretty amazing. Um, and uh, there was some great Oculus stuff. I, all, of, all of those names escape me right now because I've got a million other games in my mind. Uh, but I want to dig back in because I know that there's stuff that I'm missing. Uh, and let's see what else we got. You Vic Queasy. Uh, yeah, I got. I felt like I was gonna barf last night. It was. It was. Uh, it was weird. I was like. I felt like I was drunk after I pulled the, the Doom uh, and the PlayStation VR headset and put Doom away. I was like, oh my god, I, I, the, the bed is spinning. Uh, but I didn't. I was fine. I just needed a good night's rest. Uh, hearts and love you alls from Super 2K Full. 2Q Full. That's a tough name to say. Vic, will you stream on Twitch one day? I do stream. I'm, I use the PlayStation stream right out of the PS4 ease of use. I like to see the whole um, screen filled with the game. Because this thing outputs, the PS4 Pro outputs a 1080p, so it's actually a good quality video capture that goes straight to YouTube. And we use some of this footage sometime in reviews that we do later, so it's kind of a, uh, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Uh, but I also feel like a lot of gamers, too, you guys just want to see the game, too. You don't just want to hear me babble on, and I apologize to anybody that's watching this on the map screen going, when the hell is this guy going to shut up? But I, I feel like um, I'm, I'm doing... The, the curious a little more of a favor by just showing the full screen and not having the chat running down the side of the thing or you know flooding the screen with all kinds of things so I long story short is I dig that I can output right to um, YouTube uh, straight from um, the, the PlayStation 4 on the Xbox One X you cannot stream directly to YouTube so you I would have to go through another device or through the PC or whatever to be able to do that and I just I don't I haven't gotten that together in my gaming room in my where I actually do my gaming um, so I just stream to Twitch that way but I have to tell you I prefer streaming to YouTube because that's where the bulk of our content is we are mostly um, you know so much of our material has been about pre-edited uh, packaged the content that we we post to YouTube and so we've built up a, a, a huge chunk of our viewership there and that's where most people know where to find our content. I have nothing against Twitch but Twitch is really engineered for being live and um, so when we go through the studio and we're live we have done a dual stream output where we're on Twitch and YouTube at the same time and we're probably going to go back to that um, but when it comes to like just streaming out of my space, I still kind of prefer going straight to YouTube because it archives it right there nice and easily. It's, uh, it, it just, it's cleaner for me, you know, and Twitch is great, but I, I, we're just not live enough with the content that Twitch hasn't become our primary destination. So 
Long story short, we do use Twitch, but we certainly Where use YouTube you quite a bit more, comes. at least these days. We are um, the stand against corporate tyranny. Portal player VR hype we is fading the away. Freedom fighters of the misinformation age. We uh, are Corey Nolan, thank you so much. Spider-Man. Hey, Vic, and hello, chat. How's everybody doing? Just got back from uh, making sure Manhattan's okay, Spider-Man. You are the best. I love that you're called Spider-Man. That's so awesome. <laughs> uh... The only VR headset seems popular is PlayStation VR. I don't know, man. Oculus, I think, is is uh, if you've got a good a PC that will run the Oculus, and you've you've got the money for the Oculus and the and the touch, it's pretty compelling. Oculus has spent a lot of money on um, on software for that platform, and I know that if you've got Vive, you can more than likely figure out how to run all of that stuff on your Vive. Vive's probably the best technical piece of hardware. Um, but the touch makes a huge difference in Oculus Rift. And I, I like some of the choices that they've made. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of like the mama bear, you know? Like, uh, Let's do this. the PlayStation VR is kind of like the baby bear, and the, uh, the papa bear is the vibe. You can't go wrong, honestly, if you want to play any VR. Here we go. You're not, you can't go wrong. They each have... They each have their good reasons. That sucks. Let's go! What am I trying to do? Oh, I'm locking. I'm trying to build up my... Oh, I'm... Right. I'm drifting. Come on, come on. There we go. This is my checkpoint. No, no timer? Okay, good. Oh, Jesus, I'm scoring all over the Okay, come on. Oh, I just have to get... I have to get 218 yards in a single drift, okay. No. Nope. Almost. Good, good. Alright. Oh! Who's this? Okay, come on. All these car alarms from the, the carnage I've done. Gotta find the line. Oh! Did I do it? Great! I did it! Alright. And I hit the target score. Okay. Yes, okay. Who can challenge me? Who can challenge me? Uh, what else we got here? I saw that you're going to get your butt kicked in Thanos uh, by Thanos, Spidey. <laughs> we will see about that. I think we really have Spider-Man on here. I don't think he's lying. I think this might be Tom Holland. Tom Holland, we love you. Uh, hey, Vic, have you tried any of the Xbox original games in the one yet? No, I have not. Uh, they're sitting right there, but I have not. I've got Black, I've got Crimson Skies, I think there's a couple others that I have, but I have not. And of course I have the discs as well, I still have all of that stuff. Um, a lot of people prefer Vive over Oculus, though Touch puts Oculus in the next level for me. Yeah, Mr. Brock will rock. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see what we got here. But the Xbox 360 can run Panzer Dragoon Orta. Yeah. Black doesn't work on Xbox One? I thought it does. I've got it on my, uh, on my, in my library on my Xbox One X. 
as saying that it does. I have I just haven't pressed the button to play it. Alright. Need for Speed was the most arrests for people racing home to play it. That is irony right there, is not it? That's amazing. Uh, okay, so this is what you do. You, you have these little, these quests, and the quests kind of unlock story bits, and, uh, you know the deal. No, I don't want to do this again. No, decline, decline, decline. Get out. I just, I just did this. I just did this. Stop. Stop. I just did this one. I want to drive away. Quit. Yes. Okay. So what's, uh, so I got an agent there, so I'm getting, uh, chased by cops, and there's another, uh, uh, there's another drag, and then what's this one, more drifting, I'm not crazy about those, I just like the racing. I do like the car, the cop chases. We'll do one more cop chase and then that's it. All right, here we go. Oops. Okay, let's do the race to that. Traffic lights in Lakeside really don't interest me today. I want my, uh... Where's my garage? Let's see, we'll go right there. Well, that's a tune-up shop. Oops. Fast travel there. Okay, cool. Um, I have not been watching Walking Dead, Mr. Robot, or Riverdale. I want to watch all of those. I've heard Riverdale is really cool. Um, but And I'm a fan of Walking Dead and Mr. Robot. Um, I'm almost up on Flash. And I watched Star Trek Discovery. I did keep watching that. We reviewed... Um, the first couple of episodes on uh, Film Fury, and, and we both said that we would keep sticking with it, and I actually liked it. I, I feel like it's not, not really a great Star Trek experience, but it's kind of a cool show. Um, I'm behind on The Expanse. I'm behind on a bunch of shows. I, I guess I've just been really busy with uh, the movies and the, uh, and the games I've, I've been reviewing this year. I think I lost a car somewhere. I had a pretty tuned Volkswagen, <laughs> which was one of the first cars that I got, and I just kept uh, spending money on it, but I don't know where it is. Maybe it's in another garage. I have three garages. All right, let's see. Derelicts is the name of the, um, um, okay, what's this, this garage, tune-up shop, oh, this is the other one, uh, hmm, Activities, locations, collectibles. Uh, maybe I'll go to the dealership then. So where is that? Where is the dealership? What do those look like? What are, what's that icon? Uh, locations. That's what we want. Ah. 
they have the handshake icon or the dude bro hand handshake icon weird see what we got in here. Corey, tell him I'm playing on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Enter dealership. Great. I think we're going to get a Lotus. Why not? Send that to the garage. Whoa. Okay. Oh, this is a, only a drag dealership. Well, that's crazy. Where's the other one? Location. That's the off-road one, right? Okay. right there. Runner. Oh. There we go. Haha, <laughs> Blade Blur, you're right about that. Uh, reinforced to battle cops, okay. So all of these things are locked. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, screw it. We'll go chase the cops in this thing. Uh, or get chased by cops in this thing. So route to that. Here we go. Okay. 
There we go. The hole in Dan's sock. You're up super late. Good to see you. Um, I had that. Let's try the Dodge Charger. Why not? Let's do it. You got the wrong car, miss. No, I don't, Jessica Miller. And step on it. We're on the clock here. Aren't we always? Don't take a direct route. We've got to throw them off the set. You got it. Alright. Big old American muscle. And the VO acting is kind of punishing. Why are we in a rush? What's the threat? My girlfriends all think I'm powdering my nose in the bathroom, but I snuck out with one of their lieutenant's cell phones. The house again. They're everywhere these days. Something big's coming. Everyone's been on edge since that convoy got hijacked. Hey, babe. How's you gorgeous? I'll be there in a moment. TTYLBFF. <laughs> Who was that? Friend of yours? God, no. I can't stand that bimbo. One good thing about blowing this cover. Pardon me. What was that? Excuse me. Oh, now they're reacting. You said something big was coming. What did you mean? The races are just one side of the business. Come on, come on, Jesus. The house has something bigger in mind. You mean the casinos? Among many other things. Let's go. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Nope. Oh, okay. No. No. Okay. Man. To give you like six screens of telling you these are. Okay, let's do this. Shenmue 4 for life. Oh, Shenmue for life. Okay, we don't need to see this. Let's go. All right, party don't take a direct route. We've got to throw them off the set. You got it. Keep it up, girl. Why are we in a rush? What's the threat? My girlfriends all think I'm powdering my nose in the bathroom, but I snuck out with one of their lieutenant's cell phones. The house again, they're everywhere these days. Something big's coming. Everyone's been on edge since that convoy got hijacked. Hey, babe. How's you gorgeous? Uh-huh. I'll be there in a moment. TTYLBFF. <laughs> Who was that? Friend of yours? God, no. I can't stand that bimbo. One good thing about blowing this cover. You said something big was coming. What did you mean? The races are just one side of the business. The house has something bigger in mind. You mean the casinos? Among many other things. Oh, shit. What happened? Oh. Okay. No. 
Oh shit. Didn't know how to navigate that. You've done good, Miller. Oh, I didn't hit 130. Come on, come on. Oh, 128. Damn it. That was close. You own bleak, Miller. Ugh. Okay, my friends. Go. Rock on, Bay. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh my God, you're bringing back some good memories. They should bring back Echo the Dolphin. A lot of you old school gamers out there, I love it. Speaking my language. So, guess that convoy job you did for Weir wasn't a fluke. I'll have another job for you soon, Miller. Expect me. Okay, so runner. Runner missions are basically uh, time trials or you're getting chased by cops, which is cool. Okay, I'm going to play uh, something else, I think, just for fun, just for uh, sort of a little escapism before bed. But uh, I think that's uh, that's going to be our stream. You guys all rocks. Thank you so much for joining me. Made this evening a lot more enjoyable, a lot less lonely playing my Need for Speed here. Uh, have yourselves a fantastic night. Thanks for staying up late out in the East Coast out there or anywhere else in the world that uh, you might be watching this. And uh, thank you all to anybody watching this uh, as an archive. Your support is incredible. We'll see you very soon with the next game. Take it easy.